So this is the Canon R5C, and from the day it was announced, I had a feeling it was going to be a very important camera. So I pretty much ordered it immediately to hopefully get ahead of the long wait times. And in just a few months, it arrived fresh on my doorstep. Now, it has been a, a little bit over a month since I received it, and man, do I have a lot to say about this camera. Now, by the time I get this review out, I most definitely won't be the first video out talking about it by far, but hopefully I can paint a clear picture on how I have used it and all of the good and bad that I have run into over the month of running this camera through pretty much every test I possibly can. So with a camera this feature packed, it's a bit hard to know really where to start. So let's jump in at the element that warrants that C branding, the video features. I personally think that if you have done any research at all about this camera, then you probably are well aware of the video specs that this camera has. 8K video at up to 60 frames per second, C-Log3, 12-bit internal raw video capturing, and so much more. From just a technical perspective, the specs alone make this camera stand in a league of its own. However, as we all know, features are just a part of the equation. The other part is how do these specs translate into real world use cases? As a filmmaker myself, I found that I honestly never use the AK that often. I personally think it is still fairly overkill for many projects. However, if you were in the need to do some reframing and post, I can see how this feature could really come in handy. Now, the one area I did find that the AK sensor came in handy a lot in was actually shooting in 4K. When shooting in 4K, this camera oversamples from the AK sensor, producing a significantly sharper image, but it also reduces the noise. For the majority of my time using this camera, I found myself in the 10-bit XAVC Cinema 4K mode filming in C-Log3 with the C Gambit color space. From time to time, I did test out other modes, but this is really what I just kept finding myself gravitating back to. Now, we can't talk about the video features of this camera without touching on the one major highlight that this camera offers, which is raw video recording. The raw codec that comes out of this camera is Canon's Cinema Raw Lite. As I mentioned, I don't see myself using this camera to do a lot of AK work. As for that kind of stuff, I'll probably lean towards my Red V Raptor. However, I did do a quick dynamic range test to see what the raw codec was capable of. Now, full transparency, I was not only testing this camera, I was testing it up against the Canon C70, which that video will be coming out very soon, so be sure to subscribe because you're not gonna wanna miss that one. My quick observation was that the R5C definitely benefits from the extra bump from the RAW. That being said, working with Canon RAW light clips were not the easiest. I don't wanna completely talk trash about the workflow just yet because I'm sure there was some user error involved. However, I will say it was not nearly as simple as working with the red RAW files. I guess since we're kind of speaking on negatives anyway, I guess it's just time to let's just rip the band-aid off and tackle the elephant in the room. When you start dabbling in the 8K settings, you will find that this camera has the ability to shoot 8K at up to 60 frames per second, which on paper is amazing. However, this comes with a huge asterisk, and that is the fact that you will need additional power in order to pull this off if you want to use Canon RF lenses. Now, in my honest opinion, this is not a big deal. And as I've said, 8K on this camera for me is really more of a luxury. Also, just as an additional note, even if you're thinking to yourself that you will use manual focus, that still won't work with the lenses that focus by wire. You have to completely use manual lenses, like cinema lenses. This is a 100% power draw issue, which naturally leads to the issue that I personally been battling with since I picked up this camera, and that has been the battery life. This is actually the reason why it has taken me so long to get this video out. From the first time I took this camera out to film with it, I quickly realized how important finding a power solution for this camera would be. It's almost black magic pocket cinema camera bad, and I've had to do like almost like three videos trying to solve that camera's issues. Now, the camera is designed to run off of the Canon LP-E6 
in ace batteries which is canon's v2 of these batteries design however when it comes to the cinema side of this camera it's still just not enough last week i was in las vegas and i brought the r5c with me to nab and I got to sit down with some guys from Canon and ask them questions about the camera to get down to the bottom of the power issues. They pretty much just let me know that when it comes to the cinema side of this camera, it was just not designed to be powered for long periods of time with this battery. The main reason has to do with the power draw of the camera in video mode. They also let me know that yes, the camera is going to be very conservative when it comes to the power modes because of this. This is the reason why in my own personal experience, when I'm actually using the camera in video mode, it can power off due to a dead battery. But if you switch it into photo mode, you'll notice that you still have two notches left on the battery. So if we know we have a problem, then what is our solution? Well, for starters, Canon does make a battery grip that was designed for the R5, but it does work for this camera. This doubles the battery life, which makes sense because it's literally using two batteries. My personal favorite solution, however, is using the Condor Blue LPE6 dummy battery and running that directly into my Anton Bauer base battery. This setup can run the camera for hours. The best part is that you can still balance this on a gimbal, slide it on a tripod, or you can just handhold it. It may not be the most ergonomically appealing setup, but it is a very practical one and you won't have to walk around with 10 LP batteries in your pocket to get through a five hour shoot. The only still downside is you're still not going to be able to have 8K 60 frames per second raw recording and have lens support even with this system because the dummy battery still doesn't supply enough power to the camera. Now I get it, this camera isn't cheap. So let me help you make some extra money on the side to help pay for this thing. I'm sure if you've been shooting video for over a day, you probably have some extra footage just sitting around on a hard drive or on a memory card somewhere. And the crazy thing is, is this footage you have just sitting there could be making you money and I don't care what it is. Video of a leaf, money. Video of an empty park swing, money. Literally video of a dog pooping at golden hour, I kid you not, money. I'm sure you have better footage than that though. So let's make this simple. Grab all of that footage you have and head over to wirestock.com and create an account. Upload all this footage and sit back and let Wirestock do all the heavy lifting. With Wirestock, they take the time to upload your videos and photos to all the major stock websites. I'm talking Adobe, Shutterstock, Pond5, and many others. To get you the most exposure and possible sales. And the best part is all of this is free. Wirestock works on a percentage of sales basis, which means they get a percentage of the sales of your stock content, which means they only get paid if you get paid. It's absolutely free and easy to sign up. Check out my link in the description and start making some money ASAP. So in the month that I've had this camera, I have put it through a lot of different unique situations, but probably the most well-suited was last weekend when I used it to capture a CrossFit competition. Now I've worked with this client for many years and the job is fairly simple. Show up with a small team, capture enough video to create a short recap video and take photos of the athletes. That's right, photos and video at the same event. This camera was perfectly made for this. So at this event, I decided to bring out this hot off the press camera and put it through its paces. When it came to the photography, this camera did not disappoint, but coming from the R5 infrastructure, I'm honestly not that surprised. The 45 megapixel stills are stunning, but they are massive. The first day that I got this camera, I actually took it in my backyard to test it with my new puppy. As far as the autofocus goes in the photo mode, it is really responsive and almost never misses. I have found myself bringing this camera out on set with me more to do some more BTS stuff, and the photos are absolutely amazing there too. I've been grabbing way more BTS photos and I've actually been inspired to get out and take photos again. These are actually a few photos from another video that I'm working on for here on the channel, the Red V Raptor versus the Alexa Mini LF. Be sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss that one. 
You know, over the past month, I really have tried to put this camera through as many tests and shooting situations as I can. I traveled with it to Vegas and hung this camera out of a helicopter chasing a truck through the desert, where this thing got crazy dusty, but it never skipped a beat. And I got the shot. I also mounted it on an L bracket in order to mount it on its side to shoot Instagram reels for one of my clients, which I must say, as a social media camera, this thing rocks. Although I would have loved to see a thread on the side of this thing. Condor Blue does have a cage that technically works for the R5C that was originally designed for the R5, but they have assured me that a cage specifically for the R5C will be coming soon. So I'll update you guys on that in the future. Speaking of camera bodies, the button layout on this camera is very well laid out. I haven't really changed the photo ones, but the video side, I've really dived in and started customizing my shooting layouts. And it's kind of just nice that I can do that. If you are interested in my video settings or my custom layouts, I can definitely make a follow-up video breaking all of that down. Just leave your questions in the comment section. But we have talked a lot about the pros. Let's break down a few of the cons or the issues that I ran into with this camera. Now, just in case you use the chapter markers to skip to this section, you can't talk about the cons without bringing up the battery. As I mentioned with the base battery, I've pretty much solved my issue, but the main con comes with the battery grip. When I spoke with Canon to see if they might come out with a different grip that could possibly take a different battery, like the bigger battery in the C70, they pretty much were clear that this was not on the horizon. Another major con is the boot time between switching from photo to video. It takes about eight seconds or so, but honestly, it feels like 20 to 30 seconds when you're trying to get a quick shot. These cons are honestly very minor when it comes to all the great things that this camera will offer you for the right shooter, which begs the question, who is the right shooter? If Canon can keep this camera in stock, which is a big if, I personally believe that it will become the new go-to camera for content creators, wedding filmmakers, and freelance video shooters all over if they haven't already jumped shipped over to Team Sony. The thing I like most about this camera is it really does feel like for the first time, Canon said, what all can we throw at this camera? They didn't hold anything back. They even went so far as to say, we could cut this feature, but whatever. Let's leave it in there and let them figure it out, which personally, I appreciate. As I stated at the beginning of this video, this camera is gonna be extremely important in our field. And after only a month of ownership, I'm stoked about what this camera will mean for my own personal creative future. Now, before you click off this video, I just wanna say thank you for watching it all the way to the end. And if you are a fan of this channel and you enjoy the content and you're looking to learn more about the filmmaking process, please let me know what type of content you'd like to see me create more in the future. The comment section is exactly where I go to get inspiration for future videos. But thank you guys so much for watching this one and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.